Hi, and welcome back to Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch. It is November the 9th, 2013, and I figured I'd give a little update here. I am in my garage with my uh, experiment where I'm growing tomatoes and peppers uh, indoors under the grow light and just see if I can, you know, get fresh tomatoes and, uh, f you know, fresh peppers and things like that during the... Uh, fall and winter season uh so everything's going really well i am uh pretty darn pleased as you can see uh, these are small to medium these are all beefsteak tomato plants in here by the way uh, but you can see i have uh ripening uh tomatoes and uh, this one here on the left is ready to go and i'm probably going to use that this morning in my omelet and this one is uh getting ready and uh you know there's other you can see this one right here. This one's practically ready also. And I have uh, bigger ones in the back. I'm not sure you can, I can see it just, let's see, right in there. You see that red showing through there in the green, right above my finger. <laughs> and that's a bigger one actually. He's a, he's a pretty decent size uh, tomato. And you can see this one's in the beginning in the ripening stages also. And that's about a medium-sized tomato. Um, you can see I have little baby tomatoes right there going on. And an even younger, uh, not really going to be easy to see, I'm sure. But this one right here has a, let's see if I can get that in there, has a little baby tomato in it. And that's been pollinated. And uh, so I have a lot of uh, new growth going on, the flowers opening up and everything. You can see, uh, so I have all different stages of the plants going on here. Um, you can see the yellow flowering and everything. And uh, looks like that big green one back there next to the one that's ripening. That one looks like it's starting to turn to. It's getting a tran more of a translucent green color at the top. And that's usually uh, what I notice when the tomatoes are finally starting to ripen up is when they start to get a kind of a translucent green more of a, a shinier green near the top of, of the uh, tomato that's when it I can tell when the things are starting to turn so things are doing really well a lot more uh, like I said flower blossoms growing and opening up for a while there they stopped uh, the, uh, they stopped producing flowers and I believe, again, that that was because the plants had enough uh, tomatoes uh, on them growing and it couldn't support any more. So that's why I think they were, uh, had stopped producing flowers. But now they're back to producing uh, flowers and more tomatoes again. Let's take a look down here at the pepper plants that I've got going on. Um, get see if we can get down in here under the top of the canopy. So I have... These are just regular California bell bell peppers, and uh, it's getting, these are getting ready to need another pruning job on them sometime this weekend, where I will uh, come in here very carefully, pick out um, you know maybe two or three sets of leaves, and leave those be, or excuse me, two or three sets of leaves, and probably uh, snip them off and do some pruning, so that the lateral shoots will continue to come out will, will force them to grow and uh, then produce you know even more leaves and more leaves and so, so it looks like some of it's trying to flower and i'm not i don't think i'm quite ready for them to uh flower yet you can see down in here you know they're, they're getting the little flower heads on them and everything on both of them so i don't want them to do it but i mean these are extremely healthy so this, again, this was a method done by Praxis, and I can't remember all these other numbers he has on his uh, YouTube channel. But um, I'm do using this method where he, you know, he snips off the main stem after with two or two, about a couple sets of leaves on him, snips off the main stem, forces the lateral shoots to start to grow. So you get a lower, um, lower growing pepper plants, more bushier and um, more bushy. And it, you know, gives, supposed to give you a bigger yield, stronger root system, 
uh, thicker stems to support all of that. And so, you know, that's what I'm doing. It seems to be working pretty good. Um, no surprise. <laughs> and, um, you know, so these are my healthiest pepper plants I've had ever. So I'm loving it. So anyways, um, I will take you out to the backyard and uh, just kind of update you what's growing on back there. Not, I don't know if there's a whole lot of change, but uh, just figured I'd give a quick little update. See you in a minute. All right, so here we are in the backyard garden. And uh, I am in my uh, raised bed that has the uh, mushroom compost that I've been bragging about. And uh, just the other day, I uh, emailed the uh, owner who uh, distributes, has a West Coast distributor and an East Coast distrib distributor. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I was telling him how amazing my plants were doing, and he 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 was so happy, of course, and you know he he wanted to use my my testimony, if you will, to uh, further promote the product. And I was like, go for it. I mean, because the proof is in the pudding, my friends. Everything is just growing so great in here. Like I've said in my past videos, I mean, this cabbage here, and this is the uh, Bonnie Hybrid cabbage is doing really good I mean excellent there's a small head forming inside it's getting tighter inside and then the same is happening to the other ones as well here is uh, the Paris Island uh, lettuce in there and it's doing better in this bed than any other you know some plants are doing of course better than others but this is starting to form up a, a nice head uh, starting to get tighter leaves in there and uh, you know you just stick your hand down there and you can feel the the uh, head of the cabbage starting to form inside so I mean it's just a, a wonderful product a wonderful product and um, let me show you some of this Pac-Man cabbage look at that let's see if I can it's hard for me to there we go the head of the cabbage right here I mean I <laughs> get of the cabbage Lord help me uh, the broccoli head right there look at that about the size of a of a fist you know it's a good size of a fist and um, you know this is probably going to be harvested real soon you just kind of keep an eye on it and see how it's uh, how it's progressing and you know here's another about half a fist size or three quarters of a fist size uh, head right there oh god look oh I see one bigger over way over there oh my gosh I'm gonna have to just I'm gonna have to go over and check that out but another, you know, medium-sized head right there so far. Here's a smaller one right here. So it's, it's, I have them at different stages. But I got a lot of broccoli. This is all Pac-Man broccoli. And, uh, you can see the heads, uh, right there. And, uh, oh, look, there's a little baby one, a little teeny tiny one. So they're all in different stages. Now let me go over here and see this one. If I'm not mistaken, that was pretty massive. It's going to be a little hard for me to... There, there we go. Maybe I can get to it through here. Look at the size. Oh, God, that's, wow. That's massive. Hopefully, this is getting, uh, let me see if I can bring it up a little higher. Because I'm, I'm just trying to move things back out of the way. Yeah, right in there. Look at that head of that broccoli. Man, that is, that is well. There's, hopefully, this is getting it. There's my fist right there. And that thing is over the size of my fist. It's like an Andre the Giant kind of uh, <laughs> head of broccoli. Wow. Man, is that going to be awesome. That's got to be about ready to go. So that tells me that I was thinking that other one I just showed you, the on the other side, that was really good. I was thinking that was ready to be harvested. If it's going to get, that's almost double the size of the other one. So I need to hold on a little bit longer. Here's a, another head right in here, about a small fist size. Wow, that is awesome. And there, right down in there, there's that, um, you can see a head forming down inside here in this cabbage. Again, this is the Bondi Hybrid. I'm just reaching my hand through the trellis, <coughs> through the trellis here. But, uh, wow. 
this is going to be good. And, you know, I'm planning on using what I have out here in my garden for Thanksgiving here in the next couple weeks. You know, I've had to come out here. This is the uh, lettuce, one of my lettuce beds. Um, and this is the uh, red sail lettuce, and this is the black seeded Simpson lettuce. And um, you can see right here, uh, this is where I've had to come out and break off the main stem because it was bolting, I think. It was, it was nearing bolting uh, stage, which was, was going to go to its flowering. It was getting so tall and everything, so I just came out here knew, knowing well, that it was going to do something like that. So I just decided to, uh, you know, snip off that, take off that top and allow this rest of the stuff out here. Hopefully, I mean, I don't know what this will do. Once I've took off the main stem, will it force some other kinds of leaves to come out this bottoms and sides? I don't know. But it needed to be done. And there's a couple of heads of in here in this bed here. You can see this one right here. This is growing so tall and the rest of it's down there. And so this needs to be taken out, topped off and everything. And uh, so now here is my, uh, this is my um, red Russian kale right here. Now, I don't know for sure, maybe somebody else out there knows, but I think as the weather gets colder, the leaves start to turn more purple, and, but that's not a sign of any kind of disease or anything that I'm aware of, so maybe somebody can inform me on that, because there's some green, the younger ones are green, the older ones are purple. Does the purple indicate that the leaves are ready to be picked and used, that they're at their peak, or is that they're on their way out and they're going bad? Or is it just a response to the, um, you know, change in the temperature? I don't know. So, you can, like I said, you can see the green and, and, and the darker greens and purples uh, coming in. So, I, I don't know. And um, on the, in the next bed, of course, is my uh, dinosaur kale. All right. And... Uh, and pull some of the uh, tool material off. And, and, I mean, it's not growing as great as I'd like it to, but I guarantee you, guarantee you, just because I don't have that good quality mushroom compost from the nursery that's over in that bed over there, you know. So I'm definitely going to be, when late fall comes around, you know, early spring and all that kind of stuff, I'm definitely going to be mending all, amending all of my beds with the mushroom compost from that local nursery and if, uh, I'm trying to remember the I think the website is like mushroomcompost.com and uh, it on the their home web page it comes up showing some kind of west coast distributor east coast distributor and you just contact the person and they'll let you know who's a local vendor in your area if you have one but I mean trust me go get that mushroom compost not the bag stuff from Walm uh, from Home Depot because that's what I have out there in this other beds because I just needed a quick little kind of uh, fix for the plant, uh, beds and I didn't need a whole bunch of stuff sitting in my driveway but you know what I probably I, I know I should have gone with the uh, stuff from the nursery because the difference between those the good stuff over there and the uh, okay kind of stuff over here is night and day night and day I mean, look at these things over here. Now, the lettuce seems to be... No, lettuce, I can't complain about. Lettuce is fine. So I know I can get away with less than top, top quality stuff with the lettuce. But like this red Russian kale and the uh, dinosaur kale, you know, it's doing okay, but not nearly as good as I would like it. So, you know, stick with a certain mushroom compost over there. And I'm hoping... Here's the blueberry plants. And they're just putting on some new growth and things, new leaves. And uh, But here's the collard greens that I'm hoping to do some harvesting on and make some uh, a dish to pass over at Thanksgiving in the next couple weeks. And it's doing okay. You know, there's been some yellowing of the leaves and things like that, but I'm not seeing a whole lot of uh, attacks from caterpillars and other kinds of bugs and stuff. And you can see right down there is the... Uh, Paris Island um, romaine lettuce and you see how it's not doing good at all in this compared to what it's doing over there you can see up at the front uh, towards the front and over there next to the cabbage I mean it's just doing t a thousand times better 
but I'm hoping to harvest some of these uh, collard green leaves uh, and have some uh, a Thanksgiving dish to pass. Uh, this is some of the Savoy cabbage not doing as great. It's just taking a real long time so I don't know if I'm going to do that again but I bet if I were to have been growing this stuff in the uh, mushroom compost in the other one it would have done a thousand times better. I think everything would have. Uh, the Chinese cabbage is done pretty good. Uh, this one right here the bugs have been getting to and attacking it some but it has formed it is forming a nice good solid head and I think this is going to be ready to harvest in the next uh, week or so. I'll have to double check on some of that because I come to some of the other heads like this one here and it's not nearly as tight and you know this one's starting to slowly get there. This one right here is getting there a lot more too so this one will be ready probably in the next couple of weeks. I don't think they form a complete solid head but I could be wrong on that. It's just some more research I got to do as you know you grow things, you make mistakes, you learn from them what works what doesn't work so I am a, like I said I can't keep talking about enough but this mushroom compost over here this is top line stuff and I mean it is it is doing a phenomenal job again here's that uh, Paris Island uh, romaine lettuce same stuff I'm growing over there it's forming a nice head in here you know so just night and day night and day I uh, picked up some new things to uh, be putting out in the garden here in the next couple weeks. Just a quick little trip over here to uh, some of these spinach sprouts that I have growing out here. So uh, I'm going to be transplanting out some of this here real soon. Ah, finally, it looks like some of the other spinach grew. It's finally sprouted up. That took a long, long time. Okay, so <laughs> anywho, here we go. Starting of the these are my strawberry plants. I had these are 50 plants per pallet, so there's 50 and there's another 50 right there. And I got to get these transplanted out. Question is, is where am I going to get the room? Where am I going to make the space? Everything is pretty much booked up. Now I do have now these are um, Chandler strawberries, and I grew these last year. If you look at my early earlier videos, I grew these. And these did pretty good, pretty good. I'm betting when I do the mushroom compost from that nursery I keep uh, bragging about that uh, they're going to do even better. I have no doubts in my mind. So I picked I picked these up at a local farm. My class and I, we went to a field trip at their farm on Halloween. And, uh, you know, they had some leftovers because they already planted theirs back in September. So they had some extras that they were selling to the public. And I picked... Uh, 50 plants, 50 strawberry plants up for like $15 and a little bit of change. So that's roughly 32 to 33 cents a strawberry plant. Now, if you get, you can probably get about maybe, uh, you know, I don't know how many, but you could get quite a, at least a pint probably per plant. You go to the grocery store and you try to find strawberries and they get one of those little plastic containers, you get about a pint of it and you're paying about five bucks for a pint. This is 32 cents a plant, giving me about a pint per plant, roughly, you know, give or take a little bit, you know. Um, and so, you know, I'm buying food and I'm saving in the long run, you know, this 50 plants, you know, 50 pints. So if you do 50, you know, 50 pints times five, that's $250. And I got this for $15. And a little bit of change so there's huge savings right there two hundred fifty dollars worth of strawberries you can go buy at the grocery store or spend fifteen dollars and some change and yeah you got to do a little extra things like soil and, and things like that but you know once you got your stuff set up you just add a little bit of minimum you're saving in the long run too so it's a, a short-term investment for a long-term financial payback Plus, you're getting the health and nutrition that you're growing your own, and you know what's going into it when you're doing things organically, like I'm doing. Um, these two buckets, nothing really going on there. I got to get in here and get these straw, um, blueberries. I got two blueberry plants hiding in amongst all the nasturtiums and all the marigolds and everything else. And I got to get them uh, put out in one of these big fabric uh, smart pots that my blackberries uh, blackberry plants are in. 
So the shadow, as you can see, is creeping in on my uh, on my yard. There's the big old 10-foot stone uh, concrete wall that the city put up as a sound barrier because um, they're doing road construction on the other side and extending a road and you know connecting it all together from one end to the other. And so gorgeous day. It's about 55 degrees out, you know, so... The seasons are changing, the seasons are changing, but it feels great. It uh, looks like I might be having some broccoli tonight or the next night or two. This is totally awesome. I am, I love the whole gardening experience. It's very therapeutic. It's very, you know, just when you come home from that long day of work and you're just tired of doing whatever it is you're doing, you know, it's nice to come out to something that you enjoy doing. It's peaceful, it's quiet, you can do it by yourself. You know, you can get the family involved or whatever. And, you know, these are things you can pass down to your uh, to your kids and everything. And then they, hopefully they'll pass it down this more of a self-reliance, take care of yourself kind of uh, attitude. You know, I'm not a big, obviously, fan of the government kind of thing like that. You know, government helps in certain areas. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, but, you know, for me personally, if I can get myself off the radar, the government's radar, the better I like it. The more sustainable I am for myself and my family, the better. My ideal situation, get a bigger place where I can grow more and more food for my family and myself, healthier food, better nutrition. And so I'm not, so when the gasoline prices go up and, the, and it causes your food uh, grocery bills to go up, mine hopefully won't go up nearly as much or not at all because I'm more sustainable. Plus, I like to get a, a, a house where I can put solar paneling on. I know it's a lot of expense up front. But solar paneling, so I can get off the uh, the city's power grid and have my own stuff. So, you know, that's my ultimate goal that I'm working towards. And gardening is the start of it all. And I'm learning all these things. I wish I would have started when I was younger. You know, I'm about 42 years old right now. I wish I would have started back when I was 20. Because gosh knows how long, uh, where I could be right now in my life. But I'm happy that I, I'm doing this now. And uh, I encourage everybody else out there to uh, do the same. Start doing more for yourself and taking care of your own self and family. And, of course, give to others when you can. You know, like I said, I plan on sharing some of my harvest with the family at Thanksgiving and stuff like that. And, you know, I encourage everybody to do the same. Don't mean to get too philosophical and everything with everybody, but, you know, become more self-reliant. Take care of business at home. You know, start growing your own garden. Get off the power grid if you can afford to do so and get some solar panels to start, you know, using nature's resources that's provided for you and, and, and work with nature, not against it, you know, do what, do what you can, okay? So this is from Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch. I will talk at you later and keep on growing and keep on living life to the fullest every day. Bye.